CPK and SPC are both pretty core parts of Six Sigma. But how can you read the CPK from an SPC chart? Let's find out. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. In this video, it's about the CPK, SPC, so basically two systems that we use within Six Sigma. Both are really focused on your centering your process, being capable, really doing what the customer wants and managing that you have the same product every time. And I get this question basically over and over, but uh, I've, I've got it very direct on one of my previous videos on how can we have capability indicators and see them in a control chart. So basically in an SPC chart. And this, well, I think the thing you need to take away from this video is CPK is not SPC. You cannot read the CPK, so your process capability, from an SPC chart, nor will you read in your CPK whether or not your process is under statistical control. So whether or not your process is in control, you will not get from a CPK number. So basically, these two are not the same. They cannot be combined and they will not one give you an answer to the other. But of course, if the answer would have been that simple, I wouldn't have to make this video. They are linked in a different way. And that is that with good process control, control charting, SPC, you have a much better chance at getting a good CPK. Now, a CPK is an end of process or actually even a product characteristic, it is really something that you give to the market. You say, we fall within specifications so much of the time. We have a process capable of producing products that are up to your specs, customer. SPC or control charts in general, they are to control your own processes inside your production, inside your factory. But how do they link? And let's first I'll go over why it looks like they're almost the same, right? So you have this SPC chart where we see that we have a lower specification and an upper specification limit. And we don't usually draw this out in the time series. We, instead of making a time series, we make a histogram. And the histogram shows us that most of the values that we saw in our analysis, they lie around here with some over there, some over there. And what we draw out is that the mean plus and minus three standard deviations observed in our analyses, they fall under this bell curve. Now with this lower specification, upper specification limit, we can sort of on the eye see that this has a CPK of one. See the plus three standard deviations, it just hits the upper specification limit. If we check the width, we see that it fits in there twice. So the CP without the K would be two. But here, because the process is not centered, and this is quite often part of the question, and it was definitely part literally of this last question. If your process is not centered, the CPK will be lower than the CP. But now how can you see this from your control charts? And here, here is the tricky part. A control chart, so a run chart, it also has limits, so an upper and a lower limit. But these are not specification limits, these are control limits. And these two red limits, they have almost nothing to do with the upper control and lower control limits. This is purely what you have observed in the process. So you took your samples, generally you know, 30 to 50 consecutive samples from your line, that gives you what can this process do, and you plot them out here. And then you take the process mean, the process standard deviation, and from that you draw minus three, plus three standard deviations. That will, of course, if you stay within these boundaries, you at least know that you have a specifically centered, or at least a stable process. And if you also stay within the boundaries, you know that the results are under statistical control. So your process is not shifting. That is what your control chart will tell you. If at some point 
they go upwards, you know that they are no longer centered around the mean. They are going up or they are going down and then your process is shifting. But now, how can you sort of, sort of combine them? How should you look at what is happening here? Let's say that our process is under statistical control. That means that we've got a nice normal distribution chart. So a bell curve, a Gauss curve. These lines, the upper and lower control limit, they are basically the plus and minus three standard deviation. So they are actually here. With the mean of the process, the lower and the upper control limits, if this doesn't really move, right? But if you have a stable process, this is how it would look. Now that means that your control chart will tell you that everything is fine while your CPK is still not super. And you see that they are not directly linked. If your process is behaving like it has always behaved, it is centering around the mean of its own control chart. But as we see in this example, it is not centered between the two specification limits. This process is off center with regard to specifications. Now, the good thing of course is that generally such processes that are highly stable can be moved relatively easily, although sometimes uh, this is just sort of a sweet spot for your process, but many processes, when they behave this nice and, and stable, they can be moved, they can be centered towards the center of your specification limits. And in this example, if we can keep the same spread, so if we do not increase how much of a standard deviation, how much variance we have in the process, it will end up CP equals CPK. So the CPK also becomes two. C uh, CP equals CPK is true when your process is fully centered, because then the capability of the process in general is the same as the capability that you're getting out of your process right now. Also, a tip here, never use the specification limits as your control chart limits. I would say don't even put them in there. It, it doesn't help you. You do not want your operators to steer on specification limits. In fact, if you have, for instance, a check weigher that weighs 100% of your packages, and that one is of course checking lower specification limits. There may be some tolerances in there, but in the end, what it is doing is dumping packages out of the line when they are too light. When you want to do a control chart on the weight, you need to take those rejected packages into account. You cannot do proper control charting on only those products that have survived the check weigher. You need the data coming straight from the process. And it might be that you, on purpose, put your nicely within statistical control process so far to the lower specification limit that it generates money for you, even though you know that from time to time you will take out a couple of packages if you would put the mean of your process very close to the upper specification limit or anyhow very far away from your low specification limit, that would cost you a lot of money in general. So basically your whole production would be too heavy and consume too much material. And it is more economic to put it towards the lower in this case, but for some measurements, this would be the, the upper specification limit, knowing that your process is nicely under control and that you can, uh, that you can handle a couple of defects from time to time because this 100% check way just gets them out of your line anyway. So that is a bit of a special case. And so there you have it. CPK, SPC, they are different systems. They even have a different base. The mean is not the same. The limits are not the same. What they try to do for your process is not the same. Yes, they are both in the Six Sigma toolkit and they are both very strong parts of that toolkit but they have different goals and they have different numbers that they use, different concepts that you apply. So I hope that this clarified for you what the difference is between SPC and CPK. And if you like this explanation, don't forget to hit that like button. And also, you know, this came from a question 
in the comments it actually came from a couple of questions but one of the most recent questions just sparked this video so if you have anything that you would like me to explain about lean about six sigma don't hesitate to write in those comments i like your questions they give me the inspiration and they let me know which videos will be useful to make for you and that is what i would like to do now i wish you the best of luck in your six sigma trials and as always enjoy the improvement journey <laughs>